that your word will work mightily in us. Father, we know that you're always good, that you're always loving. And as we commit ourselves again to you this morning, I ask that you'll anoint all of us, that we would both hear and speak by your spirit today in Jesus' name. And all of us said, amen. All right, so this morning we're going to talk about graduation, seeing that everybody is graduating. At this time, but I have another caption to the title, which is, there are no failures in the kingdom. Only we do. I don't know if you've been, when, when you've been in school, I have you know, got like the red line put across my work from time to time. Not all the time. I was very, very good in school, you know. I ate some of the classes, uh, some of the years. But, but there were times <laughs> some of our work was required some, you know, some stringent measures. And so the teacher would go, tch, tch, see me, eh? or, or redo. The, the, kingdom, uh, the kingdom has its own works, as I would explain today. And, and what, this is our subject, of course, in, in the days we're living in. Matrix, uh, the matrix are receiving their results and they worked the previous 12 years. For some people, 14 years because they've been in school for two more years. Uh, for, you know, because of nursing. I was in nursing for two, two years. I was not so bad, but they just wanted to keep me out, <laughs> out of the way. It was amazing in nursing. I even tried to play truant. Could you imagine that? Nursery. I remember that. I still can clearly remember nursery. I must have been four or five between those two ages because I started school at five plus. So, um, yeah, nursery. I still remember my, I can visualize myself sitting on that sand path next to it and not going to school, watching the school from far away. Of course, I had issues there, but that's another story. For another time. And so by the time I got to grade one, I was acing the class, you know, <laughs> I was so good. Because I've been in the nursery for two years, I and mean, I, I could count not forward. The children in the grade one couldn't even count forward. I could count forward right up to 100 and backward. Oh, was that good. Yeah, but from time to time, you had these things uh, in your paper. See me, read you. And for some of you, uh, you've had uh, maybe good grades now. And others of you have not had, you are not so lucky. Let me put it that way, mildly. I wanted to say something to you, for those of you that didn't do very well. I don't think there are many of you, but I don't know if there's any one of you. If you are here and perhaps listening to me later on this time, don't be discouraged. You have your whole life ahead of you, you know. Don't be discouraged. I know how that must feel. And some metric, and some with metric passes, uh, uh, you know, in the past, they still don't have a job. And so in that sense, they are losing years. So if you, even if you repeat your year, you're still ahead, really. So if you've, um, if you've dropped some grades and you're out, don't feel like that's the end of my life. Um, it's sad that in our country, even with the, sometimes with a degree, you might not get a job. Eh? So what does it mean? Do I not study? Do I, do I quit? No. I think... I think you need to continue your studies. But if you've lost a year, you're still in very good company. Some people have, have the, they're out of a job and they've got a matric. Maybe they got a bachelor's pass and still, uh, if they were going to work, uh, can't even get into university. So don't, be, don't, don't beat yourself up. You're a young person. You can study. Um, there's a lot of years ahead of you. 
Don't let anybody. I've never met my 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 uh, school pupils. You know, I don't think I've met one of them since that time. So some of them you'll never meet. So don't be afraid of repeating a year because you think, well, I, I don't know what's going to happen to them, and I am going to be looking like silly. My friends on the other class and so on. Uh, hey. And then, you know, when you, let's say you passed your matric and everything is okay. You know, life has a way of throwing you curveballs. You know, it's constant. It's the way it is. You learn, you learn how to fight. You learn how to win. So learn now. Maybe you have not studied very well, perhaps. Uh, maybe you studied the, 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 the ones that didn't come out or did come out. Or you didn't study the ones that came out. So... So I, I think, you know, you, you, you'd learn how to fight. Life is full of these, these uh, lessons that we learn. But about a Christian, you know, is there such a thing uh, as graduation? We're not talking about life after death because now they, when somebody dies, they say he's graduated, right? We're not talking about that. I'm talking about in your Christian life. Is there such thing as God graduating you? where you go on to the other level, something else that the Lord has for you. Yeah, I've been almost 50 years in the Lord, and I can tell you that there will be seasons. You have seasons in your life, and you have to learn the lessons. Learn it well. There's no such thing as failure in the kingdom. Only redo. You can learn it. So if you've gone through your lessons and the Lord has been teaching you something and you didn't catch it, well, by and by, you'll find you will revisit. The father is a good father. And he uh, brings correction and he brings rebuke. He brings correct, uh, you know, um, chastisement from time to time. And it's not about it's not in his heart to punish anybody. This is a Christian people have a very different thing, have a different view of what God does. The punishment is for those people that have not come to him, that still have the wrath of God on them, anger of God on them. But for the Christian, and, and again, we have to, uh, you know, find out who a Christian is. But if you truly, let's, let's put it that way, you are a child of God. You know you're a child of God. You come to the Lord. Uh, judgment is over for you. You've passed that. You've gone from death to life. But what you and I will go through from time to time will be discipline. Lessons that we have to learn. It's inevitable. We can't avoid that. All of us are going to get it. And if God doesn't discipline the entire group or your entire family, like a father won't discipline his entire family, one or two would need some correcting and rebuking and, and so on. Uh, and, the, and the view is that the Lord is good, he is good, and he wants to help you better yourself. So there'll be seasons like that. It happened for me, it'll happen, it happen for others, and it'll happen for you. I want to show you from the scriptures today, you know, how this whole thing works. And don't think it's unique for you when, you when you go through some trials and, and tests in your life. Those things, um, another word for trials and tests, my contemporary word is exams. You can understand that. And from those, you need to graduate. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, a, there's graduation for Christians in this life. And the graduation is about learning how to rule and reign in life with him now, reigning in life now, overcoming your fears, whatever fears it is. It, it, overcoming your fears is part of the training. Just as it is, you know, overcoming your fears and writing your matric or whatever else you do. Jesus continues to train us even after we fail. Even though we fail, the Lord returns and helps us because there's no such thing as failure in the kingdom, only redo. So as with the first disciple, Jesus, you would see that Jesus constantly trained them. And so he would do that for you, for us. And so maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe you think, 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting hit from every side. God don't like me. No, he loves you. You start there. He only loves those he chastises. He loves those, he disciplines those he loves. And the Hebrews is very, very strong. Uh, with the, when you read the Hebrews, maybe I should go there for a second. Um, Hebrews 12. Didn't have it for you today. I would probably develop it a little bit more. But let's look at it for a second. Hebrews 12. Let's look at verse 3. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. If you struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And then here it is. And, and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his sons? It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. There are two kinds of things. One, two things that goes on here in, in this particular text. Don't, don't despise correction. So sometimes you'll go through stuff and you say, I don't know why I have to go through this. I'd like to develop those things more because we all have issues like that. And then when you, when you start despising the Lord's correction, you, you do some things to hurt yourself. It takes longer for you to come out of that. But the, this is not punishment. When the Lord allows stuff to happen in your life, it's not punishment. The, the wicked are the only ones that are going to get punished. You and I will, from time to time, get chastised, rebuked, disciplined. All those things are important, and there's a reason for it. And it only lasts for a season. Don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and then don't lose heart. The other one, where people faint and you know, just walk away, thinking, you know what? The Christian life is absolutely too much for me. I can't handle this. Don't do either of them. Because the, the Lord, in his heart, he loves. When, when the blows come on you, remember, it's coming out of a heart of love. I know it's hard to receive that, but that's scripture. Okay, look at, look at verse number six. Because the Lord disciplines the one he loves. See? And he chasten, chastens everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. Whatever hardship you're going through. Endure it. And everyone undergoes discipline. No, let me read that again. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? Who is it? And you'll find that person who will be a brat. If you're not disciplined and everyone goes, undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate or legitimate. You're not legitimate, not true sons and daughters. In fact, the King James is very strong. He calls the, the person that illegitimate children a bee. You yeah, look it up. Huh? You kind of make it P, PG rated this morning. So you, I don't even say the word, right? Because, you know, yeah, I know if you heard it coming from your kid, they think, ooh, pastor said it, it must be cool. I'm using the NIV version, legitimate, right? Now, you're a bee if God doesn't do that to you. How's that? And if God does discipline you, you're a son. You're a daughter. Moreover, we have had, all had human fathers who disciplined, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of the spirits of spirits and live. They disciplined us, the parents, that is, for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seemed pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled but rather healed. Make every effort to live in peace 
and with everyone and be and to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord see to it that no one falls short of the grace of god and that no bitter there's no root bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many and on and on and on talking about isa i want i want to develop that but i was going to do it today but then i changed my mind i'll probably do it a little bit more next week but point Whatever it is that God's doing, remember that that which is coming on you is coming out of a heart of love. I don't care what hardship you're going through. I don't care. Whatever that is. And it's only going to last a season. It's not like forever. It's not a life sentence. But the Lord is trying to do something for you, in you, through you. And he's trying to graduate you to something different, something better. Now, I can tell you, after 50 years in the Lord and allowing him to do it, and sometimes I would kick against it, I can tell you it's easier for you to relax and let him take the thorn out of your foot. How many of you had that done to you? Thorn, that is, in the foot, and you're asking somebody, yeah, you to, got a needle, or something, you take the thorn out of it. And that person comes out of the needle. Hmm? It's not their foot, your foot, right? When they start working on the foot, and it's never an angle. He says, don't kick, because the more you kick, it's going to go all over the place. I love your enthusiasm. We're very excited, people. After, after the first, you know, the first uh, day coming back, and we got trouble. Yeah. Relax. It's going to be okay. But remember, whenever you, whatever it is you're going through, perhaps, perhaps this morning, you're in this, yeah, this time you're going through stuff. It's not going to last forever. No, it won't. I can tell you that. But don't kick. Relax. If you walk in righteousness in, at this time, walk in righteousness and walk in holiness, you'll find that the season will end very quickly. Look at James chapter 1, verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers. It says, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Verse 3, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Look at it in NLT. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Hmm? How are you going to be very excited, Ooh, like money coming, yeah? Ooh, I got trouble. Because see, see, these guys, unlike, you know, in my case, 50 years, I don't know how long they've been around, but they figured it out. When they go through some trouble, something else is going on at the same time. Father is busy developing you for something better. That's why they were like, count it all joy, pure joy, brothers. Money is coming your way. Not money, you know what I mean. You see, that, that movie, that book sells. That's why you have gospels in the world, very different gospels, other than the book, where they tell you, you're going to get this and that and that and the other. But they never ever tell you that you're going to get some trouble. Have you noticed? Because that book don't sell. Hmm. But you've got to get the entire truth. You've got to get the whole truth. Consider it, dear brothers, when troubles come, you consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that your faith is tested. Or when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Hmm. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, your lungs are like, has capacity for more. You will be perfect and complete and needing nothing. And if you need wisdom, ask the generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for even asking. So the nature of a test is that it's not easy. It's hard, obviously. God is, God is not asking you to do the possible, by the way. He's asking you and I to do the impossible. You can get so discouraged so quickly, you can say, hey, man, I don't want to bother about this. You know what? I want to end it. Yeah, that's why people want to end it, because they can't handle what's going on. But I'm saying to you, it's only a season. 
if you sleep on it, it's very possible that God is able to speak if you are being prayerful and watching for God, see? But if you're ignoring God and fighting him, then you'll find that you will faint. How simple is this? Nothing too hard. So, you know, let's say you want to do some running, and, and I haven't run in a long time. I keep saying to Rani, if I run across here, I'll be finished by the time we get there. When we watch soccer, we see this guy running the whole time, right, for 90 minutes. And if I'm, I said, you know what, Rani, that's so hard to do. I run from that goalpost to the middle. I don't know if I can make the middle. Hmm? Just running one way. They have to run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It is abnormal to do a 5K run if you're doing a run for the first time, hmm, if you're running, without building any capacity. If you can do a 5K run without building, in other words, you never, never built yourself, kudos to you. You're an abnormal angel, you know. But if you want to do a 5K run, eh, Karen? You've got to do slowly 100 meters, you know, then develop next time you do 200 meters, a slow run. Some of you can fa walk fast, you know, like walk fast. And then pretty soon you can, you know, you'll, you build capacity. That's what God's doing. That is what he's doing. What for? Well, he's got, he wants you to rule and reign and rule on earth. There's something he's planning. Now I can tell you over 50 years, He's going to increase your faith for something bigger. Always does it. So the nature of a test is that it's hard. It's not easy. So when the teacher is teaching, teacher is teaching, God that is, he's teaching, you've got to pay attention. Have you noticed when you go to school, teacher's teaching, if you don't pay attention, exam time, that guy is going to be silent. you will walk around like this. I look at you, you got the pencil or whatever, you look at and you scratch your head. I don't think we ever studied this. Why would you have, how are you going to test me on this? I haven't studied this. Now, everything that you got on the paper, you've had some teaching on. You have been taught. And by the Lord, when the Lord wants to test you, he's already taught you. So now it's time to build capacity. And that's why we find it hard to take care of ourselves. So when the teacher's teaching, you've got to pay attention because when exam time comes, he is silent, Una, the teacher. So that's why when you're, when you're going through trouble, you're asking the teacher something, he's keeping quiet. God is very quiet sometimes during the trial. You remember Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Notice that. But what was coming for Jesus and for all of us was the redemption of the entire world. That the Lord was chastening him. The Lord was putting the blows on him. The Lord, Father did that for our sake. And he did that out of love for us. And so too in our lives, he doesn't want us to remain in grade one. He wants us to graduate. That's the plan. And you think, well, I fail all the time. Well, there's no such thing as failures in the kingdom. Only redo. You will do that again. And it's all because he wants you to pass. Now, when, when the Lord began the project in Eden, that human project was a training camp. It was a human project that began where the two of them were being trained to rule. Obviously, at the end of the day, the, 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 the goal was to extend that project to cover the entire world. So that the whole world would be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. Now, fast forward to the church today, which is the focal point of God's dealings. You, you find the human project begins again. That time in Adam, first Adam, now the second Adam, or second man, the last Adam. So it begins in Jesus. The church began in Jesus. The church is now to be the royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. That's who we are. We are king's kids. Now, this thing that's going on with us needs to be extended to the entire world. If you can call it mission. So, what were Adam and Eve training all about? What were they training about? 
They, they had to train in at least three things. One, to walk in virtue. What is virtue? Virtue is behavior, your moral excellence. Behavior, virtue. You know, if, if you're not very virtuous, if you, if you behave badly, if you don't behave right, you as a Christian, you've passed from death to life. You've passed the judgment. You're, you're, you're not going to be judged again. But if you don't behave, you will find that the Lord will come and correct you. Don't, you don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. So you learn, you learn as you hear the word of the Lord. If you persist in willful sinning, you will find pretty soon that stuff happens where the Lord will himself bring correction and rebuke. He does that. So you can't shoot your mouth off because then you'll find the lessons will be learned again. Redo. Redo. See me. Mm. They were trained, this Adam and Eve, for, to walk in virtue. They were trained to walk in integrity. What's integrity? To be honest. There's a quality of being honest, of being upright, honest, to speak the, the truth. And if you don't learn to speak the truth, redo. You will learn the lesson. And it'll be constant until you pass that lesson, you won't graduate. You will remain in class one. Hmm. They were trained in to walk in character. What's character? It's a mental and moral qualities distinctive in, in an individual. You think of this person, that's his character. You expect that. Sometimes you see somebody that's out of character. They, I don't believe that that's he would say or they, they would do something like that. It's out of character. They're not like that. You know it. So the Lord is expecting all of us to behave right. Hmm. And, and if we don't, he comes to visit. So the tree of knowledge, imagine that God, if I were God, I won't put that tree there. Why put that tree there? He gave me all the fruit. Why are you putting that one? What kind of a curry is that? If I were God, I wouldn't do it. But God would leave something like that so that you and I would have to choose. We are not robos. We have to choose to willingly walk in virtue and integrity and honesty and walk in character, his character, walk in his image. And we have to say no. And we say, yes, like that. They were being trained, that Eden project. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil was left there. And the, the reason was the Lord is training them to say no. Walk away from that thing. And you find that some things are attracted to you on a regular basis. That thing visits you over and over and over. Redo. You have not passed. Watch for that. So, man's training was to learn how to rule. Firstly, over himself. How are you going to rule anything in the world if you have not learned how to conquer yourself? See, this is, this is not about just, uh, you know, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. I became a Christian. I'm passed from death to life. I'm, I'm sorted. I'm going to go to heaven. Ah, it'll, it'll be hell before you get to heaven. <laughs> and I love the way you, I can feel you, man. I, I can feel, I can feel you. Your energy is exciting. Mm. So both man and his wife were rulers, not just the wife, not just the man. Both the men were given the rule. Be fruitful, rule, he told them both. So they were, they were in training. How? What? In righteousness, to be a holy priesthood. You know, have you noticed? 
that some of our prayers don't get answered. There are certain things that don't work. You know, sometimes when there's unrighteousness in us, that thing that we're trying to rebuke in other people, that thing is in us. That thing which we're trying to rebuke in our lives, in our homes and families, that thing is in us. It's not there, it's here. So if you try to rebuke, it's mockery because the enemy says, ah, but you got it there, man, inside you. Yeah. We need to walk in righteousness. You can't just, you know, if you're honest, sincere, you've got good character, all of those things, and you can tell the devil to get off. But if you're a lying individual, you can't worry, you swear, you, you know, you live like the devil out there, and you find the devil will be your friend. And some of the stuff, you're not going to graduate at all. You park in that one spot because you're not going to, nothing's going to happen. Then you'll want all kinds of other prophetic people to pray and to tell you something. Hmm. Because you can't do it. Why? Because the enemy has now come. And that's what he did in the Garden of Eden. There. The enemy who came there. First thing, question God's word. Question it. Despise God's correction. Why you put the tree there? No, you should be, you know, he wants to make you wise. That's why he wants you to, to eat that. Don't want you to eat that. You'll be like him, knowing both good and evil. She took it, ate it, gave it to us husband. He ate it, both sinned. And we that were in, in them, in Adam, we all sinned because of that one act. We are still waiting to graduate. Hectic. But Jesus, the last Adam, he came, sorted it all out. So, let me, so I'm trying to land. There's so much to go, go through. In Hebrews 5, it says, but solid food is for the mature. Solid food, drinking milk, eating meat. Solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish between good and evil. How do you know you're growing? If you're discerning what is good, what is evil. That tree, not eating from it. I'm going to walk like this. Who's watching? I don't care who watches. God is watching. I don't care about my heart attitude. I will have an attitude because me and I am who I am. Right? Ritu. And it's coming out of love. So it's a constant progression or constant regression of things. So why the tests? The tests are for perseverance. Why? Because God is preparing us to rule and reign with him. Yeah, then you can tell the devil to move. You can tell the devil to get out here and get out there. You can, you, 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 do you know that Jesus, he said it like this, the prince of darkness is coming, the prince of this world, but he has nothing in me. Now that's a statement I tell you. You have nothing of the devil in you. Wow. Now you can really conquer, conquer him, break him. This last Adam did so well. But he tested his disciples. He wanted to help them, train them. How did he do it? And they had to pass the test very quickly. They only had three years. The degree was the end of the three years. So what were they being tested on? Faith. Remember when the, when the water was changed into wine? Remember that one? Look at it in John 2, verse 11. This, the first of the miraculous signs, John 2, 11. I'm not sure if I gave you this. This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. And then here's the line. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put their faith in him. You know, when you see something, when the Lord shows you something, uh, where the, whatever it is, you received a miracle of some kind, or you, maybe you got an answer to prayer. It's all designed, by the way, for you to see that the Lord has done something and for you to place your faith in him. And so these guys, fishermen, were called by him. And now for the first time, he does something. And turned the water into wine. And they gave him another look. Ah. He's the Lord. Remember the time when you came to the Lord? I know many people in the church even. Have not. I mean, hear me carefully. They have not. 
come to the Lord. They come to the church, but they have not come to the Lord. Big difference. They know about him, but they don't know him. So whatever it is that you, you have going in your life, I remember coming to the Lord when I was 19. 19. So I understand what it is to be a teenager serving the Lord, walking with God. The disciples, they saw his glory and put the faith. Remember the walking on the water? Remember that one? Well, Peter was called. No, he was not called. He was there. He saw Jesus walking on the water. And the, and the disciples were terrified. But he piped up and he said, Lord, if it is you, call me to come to you. Bid me come to you on the water. He said, okay, come. And he walked on the water. And then he suddenly realized he's walking on water. And he began to sink. And God, uh, Jesus grabbed him and so on. And so, so remember all the water incidents they recorded for you in the word of the Lord, water into wine, the water into fish. I like that one, where he said you was casting it on the right side. And I believe he turned the water into fish. Walking on the water, speaking to the storm on the water. These water miracles, I believe, are designed to say one thing. The point is, Whatever you've gone through in your life before, I want you, whatever sustained you previously, the water sustained you because you got fish from it. I want you to know I am the master of it all. And without me, you can do nothing. And from now on, you go to walk catching men. I don't remember the time, and I met with my, one of my friends this week who was my lead singer um, in my band. And uh, we had uh, worked together for a few years. I was 16. I think when I started the band, and by 18, we won a contest. We were, we were that good. And then, of course, and my, my, my friend, um, I met uh, yeah, this week. We talked about filling, filling some of the blanks of our lives, what happened. Most of the band members are dead now. Um, so we can't have a second you know, round at it. But anyway, point I had to walk away from that. I had to walk away. When the Lord called me, I had to walk away. Put it. Walk away. Walk away from my friends. Walk away from the drugs. Walk away from the life. Just away with it. And this is how it is with all of us. There are things that God's going to call you. You might be in the church, but you have not come to the Lord. Hey, that's a big line. If you take anything away today, take that with you. Take that home with you. So when the disciples were called by the Lord, you remember they were standing there, it says in Luke 5, I don't think I want to go through all of it, but let me just see if I can read through some of it. In Luke 5 verse 1, it says, one day Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with the people standing, uh, crowding around him, listening to the word of God. He saw the water's edge, two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing the nets. That's a hard work on its own. Washing the nets. He got into one of the boats that one belonged to Simon and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people. And when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets. The same nets he was cleaning, hey, put it back. Simon says, you know, Lord, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say, you know, these guys were learning something. Something about God's word. God's word is true. If you can ever learn that lesson in your life, right in the beginning of your life, God can be trusted. His word, Jesus' word is true. He can be trusted. He can be trusted with my life. I had to walk away from my own life, whatever that was, that I thought was very exciting at that time. And other people thought it was exciting too. But I... From that stage where I was, and I went to church, while I joined the choir, you know, the choir, I don't know if you've been to choirs, but they put the long gown on you, hmm? and they put a drape over your, your neck, and they got a two-tone blue and yellow with a hymn book in your hand, and the, and the pastor's wife go boing, and everybody get up. I cried through those things. Not because I regretted leaving my life behind. No. I was overjoyed. 
I tell you, I passed those lessons. I know I did. Was I happy in my place with whatever little God was giving me? Yeah, I was very happy. You notice, when you're not happy, read to. Are you happy with your spouse right now? Where did that come from? Rebuke the door. Uh, Whatever, read two. Read two. You can, you, you can talk about everything in your life. So when you start applying this stuff, you think, ooh, it gets too, too, too nervy for me. But it's the way the Lord trains. He trains you like that. You've got to learn to love what is going on with you. As the moment you come to the Lord, you enter his school. You enter his school. And he's a very good father. He loves us. Loves us more than anyone can ever love you in the whole world. And when you get beaten up hmm, with some blows coming your way by way of discipline and correction and so on, just Try your very best, prayerfully. Try to walk righteously and in holiness and say to the Lord, whatever it is you want to do, finish it in my life. You know, the guy who started the vineyard, John Wimber, was a businessman in music. He played 17 instruments very, very well. And he had a music business that was worth millions of dollars, millions. And when he came to the Lord, one of the first things the Lord said was for him to give his business away. And Lord, you mean sell it. He, now, it's not for everybody, this thing, right? But it was for my friend, John. The Lord said, no, give. That was hard to do. His partner almost died when he had what John is about to do, gave it away. And guess what happens? It wasn't long before nobody would hire John because he was useless at anything. The only one good thing he was good for was music. He got produced albums. He was, you know, yeah, he was sharp. But he couldn't work. And so finally, he had to go back, he had to do some work to support his family. So he ended up cleaning oil drums. One day somebody came looking for him because they want to give him a Christmas album to do worth a million dollars. And they came there to see him and they looked for John Wimber's office and he found him in the back and he was in an oil drum and he came out of this. What happened to you? He says, God did this to me. I know, I know, I know how we laugh about that when you see that. But I tell you, it is not funny when you're going through it yourself. But he passed. He passed. Did God bless him? See, look at the graduation. Yeah. The music that we got in the vineyard today around the world has influenced the entire world. God took away that thing. He did that like in my case, walked away from the other stuff. And then he handed him the ministry of worship to bless the entire world. But the graduation had to come because, yeah, it had come through trials and tests. Go and clean the oil drums. Because he's checking your attitude. He's trying to kill something in us. The Lord. Something that will, that will reek of flesh and carnality. You want to kill it. You can't perform with the Lord. You can't be in performance. If the Lord calls you to that, wonderful. But, if it's, but when you come, flesh, no flesh will glory in his presence. But you will learn to follow him, walk with him. Does this make sense to you? So he called Peter in the same way. And he said, Peter, you know, when he called him out, he says, do you love me more than these? Because, you know, at the end of the day, they, he gave them the same miracle. The very beginning, Luke 5, and then in John 21. The same miracle twice. Some people think he did one. No, there were two miracles, two different times. In the very beginning, he called them, they came. And then at the end of his life, when he died on the cross and was buried, before he arose, 
they decide, the Peter decides, you know what, we're so disgusted. Look at us. Well, we're a motley crew. Look at us. So disillusioned. I think I'm going back fishing. That's what he said. Look at it. Read 21. John 21. You read it. Going back fishing. And the other said, we're coming with you. And he goes fishing. And the very same miracle the Lord gives them again. And this time they discover, wow, it's the Lord. See, redo. To call you back to say, I have power over that stuff you're going through. The Lord won't let me play music as I used to play music. Though I play music, I like, I enjoy it. But go back there and play it. Unless I want to redo. He will visit me again. It's not about going to heaven or hell. Now it is about whether I'm going to graduate. Do you understand this? So pay attention when God is teaching. He will test us on it. On what you are, what he's been teaching. To see if we have learned the lesson. And all of this is designed to bring us into our destiny. We will graduate. <laughs> Come, hello, high water. <laughs> we will graduate. Read to move on. So we need to position ourselves. Well, you need to cast your net on the right side. Work hard, yes. This thing that is not going to be given to you on a, on a platter, on a silver platter. All of this, what you see is hard work, hard work. This is what is happening right now is hard work. You learn to study, you learn to go pray, seek the Lord. Those things don't just come, you know, from Google. You got to go, work hard, and no breakthrough will come unless you humble yourself, hear the word of the Lord, and do it. You give your empty net to the Lord, your empty net, your, or place your empty net, do the opposite thing, say to the Lord, here I am. Move your investment into the kingdom at this time. Move your investment to the kingdom this time around. Before you were invested in the world, I was very invested in the world. I decided my young life for 19, 20 years, no, that's it, I'm done. I want to invest my entire life now for the Lord. Let him decide the dividends. Let him decide how the investments will come. Whether it's not interested in money, money is important, but that's not the big deal. If you, if you don't get your priorities right, you will find God will come back and you'll redo. Let him decide the dividends. And far as John's case is concerned, you'll find that he gave his ministry away, his, his business away. That way he won't ask all of us to do that, but sometimes he will. But look at the dividends. We get to enjoy this because somebody died. You understand? There are spiritual transactions. The spirit gives you stuff. Let's not, yeah, let's position ourselves. Let's not become distracted people like Peter. Some have begun on a journey with God, hearing his voice. And then and you, and you learn how to walk and walk on water you took your first steps, but then you get distracted. Distracted by various things all around. You take your eyes off the Lord. Hey, it's the Lord that called you. I didn't call you. Vineyard didn't call you. Hello? The ministry that you do is, hasn't called you. God did. And God will see to it that you do what you're called to do. Whatever it is that God's called you to do that. Don't take your eyes off the Lord. He wants to reinstate your walk today. That's what he wants to do, God. Sometimes some people have become battle weary. Others, you know, you, you, you have to row hard like the winds of the battle, the waves. Then you could have a revelation of the one where he says, it is I, I. Don't be afraid, it is I. I'm here. I'm going to do this. Yeah, battle weary people. He may look he may look very frightening. You may, you may have fear and another challenge 
uh, and other challenging things happen to you, whatever the situation, know this, know this, that he who called you is faithful. I'm telling you, he loves you more than you can even know. No one in this whole world can love you like that. Don't, you know, he, don't misunderstand the blows. Don't misunderstand. It's about graduation. Look at Peter, what he became a pillar yeah? in the house of the Lord. Paul, the stuff that they have to go through, the various tests and trial. Don't faint. When the Lord comes, he comes back to and he asks Peter, Peter, do you love me? That was the bottom line. Do you love me, Peter? Do this. He's re reinstated some people here this morning who have laid down their gifts and ministries as if, you know, I have a right to do what I can. No, you don't have a right to do what you want. You can't. How you got a right to do what you want? See, my life. Yeah, I know it's your life, but it's not. You're bought with a price. You bought at a price, and you have to answer Jesus. Otherwise, yeah, the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. He's working it all out for us, even in this day. Don't think that he hates me, he's punishing me. No, no, God, don't ever use that word. Because the punishment is upon those other guys that have not listened to come to Jesus. You and I will be disciplined. Yes, we will be rebuked. We will have those things happen to us. I'm telling you, the trials, tests are all part of the deal from time to time. It won't be like one way, the seasons. When you pass that thing, you go to the next one. Some of you will write a few subjects, <laughs> few subjects at a time. The Lord bless you. Would you stand with me, please? Oh, I have to send you away. It's getting late.